why is it that we respond to people who treat us poorly? Why do we think we do? Because there is something about it that is known to us. It it's is familiar. It's it's familiar, and we don't realize it. We think it's we think we hate it. I hate it. I hate that this person doesn't want me. And if I could just get this person to want me, I'd feel good again. But it, what people often find is if that person truly turned around to meet you and gave you everything that you wanted from the beginning, it would have felt strange. Mm. That there's something in this dynamic that is in a weird way safe to you. Yes. It doesn't make you feel safe, but there's some kind of safety yeah, yeah. in the familiar. And, and that's not our fault. We should exercise compassion towards ourselves for that because it's not our fault that these, these really damaging and destructive patterns are things that we chase because yeah. it, this was created at a time when we weren't deciding our response systems to things. It was, we were in survival mode and, you know, there, there's a, um, I spoke to a woman recently, I did a show recently where the host of the show said, I really struggle to have hard conversations with people. Like if I have to have a hard, and a big part yeah. of this book is like, I have a whole section on how to have hard conversations. Mm -hmm. Because by the way, every relationship is shaped, it, it, it is, 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 is made in the crucible of hard conversations, right? Can you have the difficult com conversation? Can you say the thing you're afraid mm. to say? And can you express your need without fearing that if you do, something bad will happen? And so many of the times people end up in painful relationships or not even relationships, they end up in painful dynamics or they end up in limbo with someone where it never ends up as a relationship. Yes. It's always casual is because they're afraid to have the hard conversations. There was this woman that, was part one of the hosts of the show and it was and she said to me i really struggle to have hard conversations and i don't know why i just you know every time i go to have a hard conversation it's like i break out in sweats and i panic and i'm you know she said it's just it wasn't that in my family like no one's really ever had hard conversations she said and she didn't realize what she was saying as she said it but she said you know i mean it's like my dad for example if i try to have a hard conversation with him he just leaves the room right <laughs> and i and she kept going but she didn't realize what she had said which is your entire life because that wasn't a pattern your dad started yesterday right your dad's most likely been like that since the day you were born. Uh -huh. So what you learned is that if you tried to have a hard conversation with your father, he would leave the room. He would abandon you. So now you have what therapists call a core abandonment wound, right? That's a, this is something that's now with you. And you wonder why with this person that you're on date three with, <laughs> who shouldn't even be that important to right. you, why it feels hard to articulate that, you know, you are disappointed that they showed up half hour late to the date or that they didn't text you for a week and then all of a sudden like reached out out of nowhere to say, do you want to do something in one hour? The, and then you went without expressing that like, mm -hmm. hey, we had two great dates and then you would like, I didn't hear from you for a week and now you're like, are you ready in an hour? The reason she didn't express that is, and the reason it made us so terrified to express it, un irrationally terrified, is because in her world, it's been perfectly rational. It's not, this is where compassion comes in. Because we're very good at calling ourselves crazy. Like, I feel crazy. Why am I so scared of having this conversation? Or we get called crazy by other people. That's a favorite thing to call people. Ah, she was crazy. Ah, oh, they're crazy. Like, you can't believe what they tried to do or what they said to me. They're not crazy. They're, they're, something happened. So they experienced something in their world at a time when it was their reality. Mm. It was her reality growing up that, and I'm, you know, uh, I'm, extrapolating here but like i said if she's saying that about her dad almost certainly her dad didn't start doing that last week right he's been doing it her whole life it was real for her that there was a time in her life where if she tried to express a need with her father or tell him something 
that she wasn't happy with or something that she'd like him to do more of or less of or a way that he'd hurt her, he would not be able to have the conversation and he would leave. Mm. That, when you're a child, that's that poses a real threat to you. Yes. So what she's feeling now is rational for her in her world based on where she came from. We look at it from the outside and go, I can't believe that she would be so afraid to say this thing. And she's going to end up in a two-year relationship with someone who never meets any of her needs, who doesn't even know what her needs are, mm -hmm. who she resents deep down because it's like he never thinks of me. Yeah. But she's terrified to have that conversation because for her, it, if she has a hard conversation, it means abandonment. And abandonment means... On an emotional level, not a logical level, she might not survive. Yes. And so when someone says, I struggle, I, I find it a turn off when someone is nice. They are articulating a deep, deep pattern that has been there for a long time in their life that they didn't choose and that they may not even be aware of. And most likely it sounds like maybe their father probably was either rude to their mother or rude to the them as a child or maybe had some you know behavioral patterns that caused them to feel rude at different times yeah or they you know were neglected and they felt like they in order to get attention they had to do a lot or right. they had to be you know the golden child or they had to you know meet everyone's needs they had to go out of their way all the time to make someone happy and so you know, and then they'd get like, you know, whether it's from the father or the mother, they'd Mothers. get like a hit of love. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, they're like, I feel calm. I feel safe. Oh, this feels so good. And then of course it's right back to, you know, the next day they're cold again mm -hmm. and you have to fight for that next hit. And so if you've experienced that and now you're out there looking for love, you, you may very well have developed the association that, Love is something you have to earn. Love is something that comes in fits and starts. Love is something that you're grateful when you get a hit of it. And then you have to endure these periods of someone being cold in order to get the next hit. And of course, that's, you know, what's known as the trauma bond. But it's that's really what someone is saying. When someone says, I'm, I am get turned off by people who are nice and I get turned on by people who, you know, give me and we have all sorts of euphemistic terms for it like the bad boy or the person who like mm -hmm. you know is is super bold or the person who is has an edge or whatever but a lot of the time what we're talking about is i'm trauma bonded mm. to people who are hot and cold inconsistent make me have to earn their love their attention take it away from me and then give me it back again and that by the way makes that woman who said that a perfect target for abusive people mm. it makes them a perfect target for people who forget like whether they're abusive because they're narcissists or because they're you know uh, sociopathic it's it makes you a perfect target for someone who's in a, even just a selfish phase of their life because someone who's in a selfish phase of their life takes what they can get it's intermittent, it's up and down, it's hot and cold. And they're, yeah. gl they're glad to be around someone who doesn't ask a lot of them. Yeah. So even if you don't get someone who's truly toxic and abusive, you're still going to attract people who are selfish. Yes. And those people are going to waste your time and your energy because they're not where you're at. But you never test the relationship because you. this is on some level what you're looking for. This is what's familiar to you. Man, this is so... I mean, I can relate to this because in previous you know, previous seasons of life, I really struggled of having the hard conversations. Like I dreaded it. Oh. So, you Me know, looking, looking back, I can say, man, you're, that's crazy. Just have the conversation and whatever, just deal with it. But in the moment, you know, when I didn't have the tools or the, the nervous system to feel safe myself, and I needed the approval of someone else to to feel safe or I needed someone else to be okay with the hard conversation that I was having. And when they weren't okay with it or they would explode or they would cry or they would scream or they would, you know, not speak to me for two days or something because they were upset of what I wanted to talk about or they avoided it. It would make me feel like, oh, I'm really insecure. Mm. And I always had the fear of like, I guess 
I guess it was being alone or it was like the person not loving me in return or me not being good enough or something like that. There was probably a combination of insecurities or fears that caused me to be afraid of having difficult conversations and just saying what I really wanted to say. And then I remember having like, you know, throat clenching and like heart palpitations over like years of being in these different relationships where I never felt like I was able to speak up. And I can't blame the other person. You know, we can never blame the other person for our decision to not communicate, not set standards, um, you know, not say the things we need to say. We can't blame the other person. But it, it always felt like, oh, this person isn't willing to accept me for who I am if I say the full truth, or if I talk about the things that I'm uncomfortable with. If, I'm, if I don't like this situation, they will not accept me. And they didn't. They didn't accept me for my authentic conversations or my truth, but I was afraid of losing them for them not accepting me for who I was. And therefore it was never going to work out. And it wasn't until I started to really understand that and become aware of it and start to heal that process. A lot of things changed with Martha. Cause I was like, wow, this is an incredible human being in front of me that I'm starting to date and connect with and meet. Wow. She's pretty special, but I got to the point where I was like, but I, but I can't be willing to lose myself in order to try to have someone want to stay with me. I cannot go down this path again, which I'd done five or six times in 20 years in different relationships where I, I lost myself to try to please someone else so that they'd want to like and love me and therefore hating myself in return, resenting myself, resenting the person, resenting the relationship feeling guilty of why I wasted all this time and energy being in this relationship, fighting for it, while all the while I was losing myself and losing my self-respect in that process. And it wasn't until Martha, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have the uncomfortable conversations pretty early on, right, in the first few months. I'm gonna talk about, these are my standards, these are my values, this is what I want, and this is what I'm not willing to deal with in a relationship. And be willing to say, maybe this isn't the right fit, if you don't have the same or similar standards, and if you aren't willing to fully accept all of me, my past, my shames, my insecurities, et cetera, then maybe we're not the right fit, but that means I might not be with a great person in front of me. And that's a scary thing. Well, but it, I, I, it's scary. But it, it was it's, scary, it's, but I'd also set me free when I made the decision like, okay, I'd rather be free and be fully myself, authentic to myself than trying to please and change who I am to be with someone to have them like and love me. And that set me free to say all the com the conversations I wanted to. And it was like the more honest and hard conversations I had, it was like the more she fell in love with me.